Thank you once again for tuning in to what is going to be a very interesting session of the Nighthawk game. We are going to be doing a holodeck adventure, and one of the players was very passionate for a Dungeons & Dragons style thing, and I as a GM said, I haven't done much fantasy in a while, let's do this. So we are going to be using a very, very bare bones system of D&D. Basically, they're rolling a 1d20, checking it against a relevant stat. If they succeed, stuff happens. If they fail, stuff doesn't happen. That's the, really the only way I could get through something like this without trying to keep to both systems balanced in my head. And because this was kind of his idea, I'm going to let Mr. Um, ah, Commander Bashir take the cap or commander's log. First officer's log, start date 833-41.7. An old Andorian proverb. A man who is no more than the sum of his memories, a culture no more than a sum of its history. 700 years. In terms of written records, that's all Andoria has left in a millennium-long tale of their civilization's rise to a founding member of the United Federation planets. Before that time, Andorian history is just a collection of archaeological, guesswork, half-baked forgery, half-remembered legends, and mythology. With our recent time travel exploits, and my own experience in the last year of the Prime Directive, I've had history and the past on my mind. I have finished programming a Hala novel based on the story that I have found, Vallejo, Sithrosis, and the Colvis Knight. Lieutenant Commander Thishran has taken it upon himself to, how did he put it, spice things up a bit, and added what he calls it, fantasy. I've invited the rest of the command crew to join me on this apparent quest. End log. Okay. So, our scene starts in regular space on the holodeck. Where Mr. Th where Mr. Bashir has cajoled, diplomacied, or ordered um, those of the staff to join him. The captain has promised he will be here, but is finishing up some last-minute reporting. Take it away, Commander. Computer. Activate program Bashir 12-14-2. Very well. We're just going to get right into it. The summer what or, the? the fall equinox, a time of celebration among many of Andorra's ancient people, a passing of seasons, celebrating the sun's last rays of light onto its warm onto its oh barely warmed planet surface. However, up in the frozen northern wastes. A different people view this with dread and on ominous night. It is these people who have summoned you to their aid. They are known as the Velu, a race so alien even to the Andorians. They are cold incarnate. They can walk about without feeling any of Andor's harshest winds. In nothing but their skin. As such, they have taken to colonizing the parts of Andor that even their native Andorians fear to tread without ample layers of protection. However, they are not protected against everything, for they have summoned ye they have put out a call for the bravest so adventurers, protectors, and heroes of Andor's of ah, of Andor to come to their aid to protect them against the coming winter and the beast that rides on its cold wind. You find yourselves at the city of... <clears throat> ah, 
you find yourselves at the gates of the ice city in nearest Valdak, home of the vaunted Velun. And it's at this point that each of you have taken, uh, each of you gaze around at the scenery and then at each other as your not only has the holodeck changed its scenery, but it has also overlaid different personas on you based on various input and preferences pre-programmed by the individuals, or maybe it's just the Shran being random. But let's go and discuss our uh, persona, our persona dramatis. Uh, let's start with Vaid. Who is Vaid being for this adventure? What what do you mean by who? Oh, yeah. okay. how are you appearing to be? Uh, she is. She happens to be rather short in stature now, and blonde, and <laughs> with slightly pointed ears, and she has. Uh, I guess her color coordination would be rather yellow. So she's very yellow in her garb and she's looking at herself. She's like, oh, okay, I, I, I can get used to this. And then she's looking around and realizing, wait, wait, why are you so tall? <laughs> like, what's going on? Next up would be Commander Helsing's character. XO, I've never done anything like this. What are we supposed to do? Commander, I'm still trying to figure out why I have boobs. <laughs> I, I okay, wasn't, I wasn't sure that was you. <laughs> um, but, um, this, uh, the Shran, this was not my idea. <laughs> I thought we were going Andorian history. <laughs> ah, but what, what truly is history, but what we make of it? After all, there's just no point in just certainly... Um, replaying things that they, as they absolutely were, I want to inject, inject a little bit of uh, the fantastical to it, to in, enlighten us, and, and treat it as a team-building exercise where we learn to enjoy new cultures. Think of it as a almost an exercise in learning how to um, react to brand new cultures that we've never seen before. Is that a little... Uh, you're cutting out there, Mr. Thush, or Mr. Bashir. <laughs> Is that a loot? Why, yes, it is. I've heard this ancient uh, human instrument, and it uh, tickled my fancy. So, yes, I have a loot on my back. <laughs> Besides, you, you can't you can't say that with all the rumors you've heard of all straight sort of change of um, transport accents. You can't imagine that it, it's not impossible that we'd find ourselves in some strange sorts of bodies in the future. So, this as a practice run for. If you ever find yourself in a strange body that is not uh, the one you're born with, and how to adapt, or we've undergone cosmetic surgery to infiltrate a society to gather intelligence for first contact. Why well, oh, yes, imagine uh, that. Imagine uh, we ever did that. Uh, okay, I can kind of get it. Um, I guess on the interest that I was a a paladin. Um, computer, random name generator, human, paladin, Garen Sunbringer. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm Garen Sunbringer, paladin of, he looks, Tear. You're the paladin of Tears? <laughs> no, well, this, this is, is not that. Oh, T mm, Okay. I would say tire, but there's no E at the end of it. Well, you humans do have your, your strange religions. I don't and know. And I'm all in gold plate armor. All right. And Mr. Thashran, you're looking a little green around the gills. Care to describe yourself? Why, yes. I am uh, seven feet tall with a rugged yet uh, roguishly charming um, face. That uh, perhaps upon first uh, inspection may seem intimidating, but rather, once I uh, open open my mouth and uh, move my legs, you shall simply be um, stunned and captivated by by my very uh, performance. But uh, having said that, my name is Lord Bugak, 
from the lore from the land of the uh, or 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 orcas and uh, as you can imagine you you would ask what am i the lord of why i am the lord of the dance antenna have somehow formed into giant pointed ears and confuses me unbelievably i was expecting to be a great ancient warrior but still i have my ice blades so i'm thinking i still am a warrior why are so, you implying that that women cannot be fearsome warriors no not at all i'm just confused and <clears throat> slightly intrigued <laughs> Everyone who's given their name, I don't think Vaid's mentioned her. I have not. <laughs> she's. I have not. She, she's just sticking around. Okay. Uh, I, I guess I'm Kit Three. So, um, a cleric of. Oh God. The friend's like, are are you the cleric of tears? <laughs> a cleric of tears. <laughs> <laughs> I don't you look, know. You look like the sun. Isn't there a god of the sun? As a the god of wizards, some knowledge. Okay, because if if you're the if you were following the god of suns, that'd be really weird. If if Garen was bringing you along as the, since he's a sun bringer. <laughs> yeah. True. 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 As you have all come to terms with where you are and who you are. A lau a a ah, a series of bells charming in perfect harmony begin to reverberate from the dome structures in front of you. Their peals ring and echo throughout the chasms. It takes some time for you to realize that even though the bells have stopped, the echoes still uh, reverberate for minutes afterwards. The great crystal ga crystal ice gates open and you are met with a fanfare of cheering of cheering velu their purple skins and their blind or their blinding white eyes <clears throat> beckon you to come forth it seems that not only are you welcome here you might be celebrated I guess we get the show on the road folks all right. Are these, are these people related to the Draven? That's a good point. Computer. Right. I don't want to run into Big Sister. <laughs> right. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so be wary. They might steal from us. It's um, all a ruse. So, Mr. Sunbringer, would you like to lead us in? <laughs> Aye. Forsooth and forthwith, noble party, follow me. It's a, that exact point. Is that how you do it? Like the, the door opens. The door opens. <laughs> there is a... As you guys step down the bridge, uh, looking behind you, there's the <laughs> sound of the holodeck door opening. And you catch for a brief second a familiar uh, half-trill captain walking through the door. But as he does, his gear and garb change into that of, well, I'll let the captain describe. So Sengrel will then find himself transformed into... Something quite ornate. He uh, he's wearing quite ornate uh, clothing with reddish designed pauldrons with with arm braces that have gemstones in both on both sides and sloths. And to at his left, he'll find himself with a sword and hooped earrings. Generally, Sangrel doesn't have a beard, but it seems at this point the holodeck decided to give him one instead, giving him that nice. Uh, that nice, good scruff. Greetings, Captain. Mr. Sithran, was it necessary for you to alert the computer to notify me with these loud bells while I was in my ready room? 
Of course. Captain Is, this is an imperative team building exercise. And um, it was important that everyone was here um, at the same time to fully enjoy the and experience. Anyway, I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I'm enjoying I'm enjoying the site, but I mean, Commander Helsing. I mean, if you do, you really need all these people to cheer you on. I mean, am I really that mean to you? <laughs> you feel like you're getting enough attention already, sir? I mean, just. This entire crowd is just here for... I come in and I just see them cheering for you. I, don't get me wrong, I'm impressed, but I just want to make sure it's not deeply rooted in something else. It was Deep for you, sir. Oh, good save. <laughs> As you make your way through the uh, crystal... The, yeah, the crystal ice gates and down a carpet, at first you think it's... Uh, uh, at first, you think it's uh, some sort of robed. Ah. At first, you believe it to be a carpet of monumental length stretching all the way down the roadway. But no, as you look down, it appears to be uh, crushed rubies, uh, opals, and other gems of color, ground up so fine to be that of a a carpet so smooth that it, you don't even feel the individual grains on your boot soles. At the end of the uh, procession and the cheering mob, there are two uh, Velu individuals. They are standing, um, wearing as little as possible in a PG-13 show, uh, showing complete and utter um, contempt for the cold. Not the right phrase, I should say. Complete immunity to the cold. Uh, they're unlike Andorians, of course. Who call this world home they lack the antennae instead have ears that rise up to a point well above their heads they lack the traditional white hair instead the female has blue hair and the man is raven black as you approach they actually bow to you the the male steps forward greetings adventurers you have come far and i wish that there was more time that you could tour our fine city alas i can only give you one night's hospitality before your before you must leave to fulfill your quest still you had not come this far uh, with the promises of nothing, of course. So, I sh I will bid t ah, I show to you your reward upon completing the quest and slaying the foul creature that threatens our home. And he gestures to his partner, who in turn does a, a snap of her fingers, and five chests appear. She opens each one, and it contains g glittering gold. Uh, sparkling gems and finely cut rocks each one of these chests contains enough wealth to see you thrive in whatever lifestyle you choose wherever you wish to call home such rewards as yours upon slaying once you slay the great and d and dangerous Nagra Jindulix. And the crowd sort of lets out a collective gasp at the muttering of its name. As she wait, there's a pa there's a pause while the crowd si silences itself. <laughs> and Udro, the female, steps forward. Yes. The great white drake threatens our homes once more. Once these, once the sun dips below the horizon, for, the, and it, it is gone for the full season. Nagraj and Dulix will awaken and terrorize us once more. However, we believe that he can be beaten. He has strong protective wards that protect him, his sleeping body, while the sun is up. However. 
once the sun disappears, the wards go away. There's, we believe that there is approximately a one day cycle where the wards are gone, a Negrija Dulix has not yet fully wakened. We believe during that time he is beatable. And we, and it's up to you, brave warriors, to seek him out and vanquish him. Go investigate the uh, Jess and turn around and look at everyone and it's like this isn't gold press latinum <laughs> does anyone know what this is <laughs> so I'll turn to everybody else and just say if you guys wanted a metal ceremony you shouldn't have joined Starfleet Intelligence <laughs> agreed Kevin um this will do. Do you have food and refreshments for us? And my large green friend wishes to play upon ye loot. Why, yes, there is a banquet this evening, which will tr which will eh, which will feed you well, for you have traveled far to get here, and must be hungry. It would be poor form of us not to give you at least one night's respite and entertainment before sending you out on what on a treacherous journey. Fantastic. I shall also play play the song of the Andorians, the uh, wonderful people who are perhaps the uh, most aesthetically pleasing of all the races amongst the lands. Yes, that would be very wise for our relationships with the Andorians are few and far between. They are a much respected people uh, whom we share stewardship of this planet. That will work out well because I have many stories uh, of the Andorians <laughs> and how fantastic they are. I look forward to hearing them, uh, Sir Bugak. And with that, uh, uh, Sifizat claps his hands three times and shouts the word that every adventurer likes to hear, FEAST! And the holodeck changes uh, scenes at this point to a royal banquet hall. Which I don't have a set piece for because I was... Yeah. It's a nice sure. banquet hall. Theater of the mind. <laughs> a theater of the mind, yes. And ironically, we still lose momentum. <laughs> I... <laughs> for the scene change so negative one yes precisely yes <laughs> the crystal palace is if you remember the movie from or if you remember the james bond movie tomorrow never dies i think it has the ice hotel that one. Oh, nice yeah something similar to that where everything is crisp cold clear and delightful You share drinks with maidens or men, depending on your preference, or both. Why not? And the day and the evening would last long into the night, as evenings typically do. Anyways, does anyone wish to do anything special during this time? Except, of course, for Mr. Bugak, who at this point is probably dancing on the table. Oh, I am. Okay, this should be fun. Uh, so we're going to try rolling. Um... So basically how everything is, is I gave players set num set numbers to assign to the traditional six D and D's stats. And they're just going to roll a D20 uh, based on whatever stat seems appropriate at the time. And if they get below the stat number, then they succeed. So let's roll one D20 here, Mr. Uh, Bugak. Uh, let's roll your charisma stat. And your charisma, I believe, is a 16. And yep. you rolled a 14, so you succeed. Yep. Mr. Bugak, they have never seen a 7-foot-tall green orc dance as lightly or as uh, charismatically as you do. And your loot playing at the same time is delightful. The only problem is that their tables were not meant 
to put up with this much vertical force and you eventually break one of them but you do it in such a way that it seems completely planned and you you pull off the dismount it's fine when the when the table shatters it, it artfully rearranges itself into a uh, set piece um showing off some andorian culture good because i wasn't paying for that <laughs> What are you talking about, uh, Hakeem? We have all, all that, that treasure they just awarded us. Yeah, we gotta do the quest first. Apparently. Oh, well. <laughs> My <Minor> detail. <laughs> uh, is Mr. Sunbringer doing anything? He's clap, trying to clap in rhythm, but he is horribly out of <laughs> offbeat. <laughs> horribly offbeat. And Kithri. <laughs> She's uh, wandering around trying to not get stepped on and <laughs> just trying to see and observe and enjoy her drinks for the most part and maybe chat with a little. The day, um, it is, you find that everyone is quite amenable to everyone's presence. They're mm -hmm. just happy that... The, they have hope for what will against what might be a very very long night once the solstice hits uh, Hakeem anything for you I'd still be at one of the banquet tables normally I'd be by myself but as we get further on into the night and uh, seeing how nobody's gonna come to me I gotta and I still think this entire thing is ridiculous but I might as well put on a show so I'll go ahead and uh, I'll take my sword that the holodeck just decided to give me, and I'm going to do a bunch of sword tricks with it with the with the drink cups at my table, flipping them over, drawing a crowd. Oh, fantastic. That sounds like a fun dexterity roll. Yeah, it does. So roll me a d20, and we'll compare it to your dex. Um, what is your dexterity by chance? My dexterity... Uh, we got a good, right? So that yeah. is, we assign that as... Uh, good 13. is 13, yep. Yeah. I just realized afterwards, you just uh, great is 16, goods are 13, normals are 10, and bad is 8. Feel free to replace them with actual numbers for easier reference. But yes, um, you pull off the finest sword juggling act they have ever seen. And the crowd is amazed. And Vallejo... What is it that you wish to do? As the night goes on and progresses, I would like to find out more information about this creature. Mm. Um, and uh, so I guess one would say gather information. Yes, <laughs> gather information would be probably charisma based, I would think. Possibly okay. wisdom, if you can, you can make an argument uh, for either. I'm going to go wisdom. Okay. Uh, that is my higher stat. Um, just trying to. So it's roll backslash d yes. twenty. Yeah, slash. Yeah, backslash roll one d twenty. Or just d twenty, I guess. And that. Uh, nope. Other way around. So slash roll. Uh, okay. Hang on. Let me put that in Discord for you. Um, where is my Discord window? it is wait i think i got it yes yep, that's it okay. um and what is your wisdom modifier my wisdom is 13 13 so whatever information so it seems that the holodeck does not believe in synthahol uh it <laughs> believes in alcohol which while delightful for the most part, sort of limits one's faculties for gathering information. You hear long tales of Negra, Negra Jindulix, uh causing a rain, rains of terror across the lands during the uh, night of during the long cold night of the of winter. But you don't really get much else out of that. Long tales, a bunch of fantasy mumbo jumbo, mostly in one antenna ear, out the other. And 
So I, I lean over to uh, to uh, Hakeem. So this is the dragon. Do you think it's like the stories they talk about? Fire breathing, wings, giant tail. Uh, I, I think the captain forgets it. He's <laughs> so, so, uh, he totally passed out, I guess. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. Hakeem is snoring on the table. People seem <laughs> Both to swords him. stuck on either side of his head. Oh. He, yes, it is. He, Ali, up. <laughs> Miss, Miss XO or the Valio? Faleo? Faleo. Faleo, okay. <laughs> Names. Faleo, do you think this beast is the dragons that they have spoken of old? Fire breathing, giant wings? I know nothing about old and I. That was why I actually did this, was to learn more about ancient Andorian culture. Um, this is ancient Andorian culture? It's not some fantasy? Well, it was supposed to be. Until okay. Until our engineer played with it. <laughs> Boy, I was getting to wonder about ancient Andor. But actually, the records for Andoria have been lost for centuries. They burned them all uh, and restarted our society 700 years ago. So as a possibility, yes. So <laughs> it was a bad fantasy story and they wanted to get rid of all the evidence? Possibly. <laughs> Possibly, com Commander. <laughs> so scene change. The holodeck once again changes uh, scenes and begins chapter two the quest over the navericks you find yourself once again standing upright in the uh, it is a fairly familiar scene you are standing on the crushed ruby carpet leading out of the city there are cheering crowds people of wishing you good luck uh vallejo you vallejo and kithri have been given ice lotuses as a t token of good luck and potential um, uh, potential uh, mating rich or potential signs of a mate should you return and are interested oh my God. <laughs> the as you stride forward once again Udro and Sifi the two lo the lord and lady of the city retrospect I should have chosen a different name for the Sifi and city but whatever meet you my friends i am pleased that you have rested well this past evening and have drank heartily for your quest has just begun you will you must journey through the the untamed lands that is the navrick mountain range and find yourself at the village of seratol once there you will cross the planium sea to the lone peak of castledine and there you will find at the very top our, our destroyer. You must make it before the sun f sets the final time for, so that you may be within ah, so that you may approach this dragon with enough time left to slay it before it gains its full power at moonrise. I bid you well and please take these supplies for you will need them and he gestures there's several large packs containing several days worth of food rations basic hunting necessities and a sled to pull things along on do we have animals to pull said sled or uh, something could possibly be uh, found if someone's willing to uh, make a uh, charisma check for it. Or a diplomacy roll. 
or computer <laughs> I, horses <laughs> yeah. i shall investigate and see if we can find worthy steeds to to take the task all right yeah keep in mind that this is a holodeck adventure at any time you can just say <laughs> computer blank and stuff might happen <laughs> Mm. Udro, the uh, blue-haired, where's the bluish-greenish-haired uh, Velu, sort of takes a step back and looks aghast. <gasps> I cannot believe that we have given you so much hospitality, and yet have been so short ah, short-sighted, as she deli attempts not to look at Kithri, in, prov in not providing you <laughs> what you need to do for your journey. Please. Accept these, and you are, and you are given uh, six uh, large, bulky horse-like creatures. Um, they're similar in build to the giant Clydesdale horses you may recall seeing in Budweiser commercials. But have six legs. Or sure, something. they have six legs. There we go. That's <laughs> canon now. Lightner. Yes. <laughs> Mount up and all right. Yes, um, tally fourth. Uh, please, not so loud. I don't know what was in that stuff last night, but that was not simple. Let's go, people. <laughs> the holodeck plays a loud, well, a melodious fanfare. And changes scenes to a deep mountain pass. The city, ah, as you look back, the city of Ernest Valdax, gleaming spires fade away in the distance, and a fog begins rolling in. It's a chill fog. Many of you, even the Andorian. Uh, Vallejo is not immune to it as she pulls her cloak warm, snugly around her for more warmth. Those of you who are not Andorians, obviously the holodeck is not going to freeze you to death, but you still feel the bite and chill of the wind upon you. So, where exactly did you get this program from, Commander? Um, I did some research in ancient Andorian cultures, and I let the Sharan play with it. I understand that, but I mean, at the same time, these modifications are most definitely extensive. Is there anything of your original visit left that we're going to experience or that you anticipate? I don't know. I left it open to the anger, um, algorithms to adjust to our choices and experiences. So I wanted to play it out as an adventure. So I don't know what's coming next. As the commander said, I don't know what this creature is. And most people last night weren't talking except for horrible stories of this death and destruction oh great a hollow novel controlled by the computer that says my choices matter but <laughs> <laughs> at least we have loot boxes <laughs> <laughs> and because i find it amusing uh kithri could you please roll me a dexterity check sure Oh, this is the real D20. I was like, oh, yeah. And what's your dexterity score? Uh, 10. Okay. Nice. Uh, Kithri, you find it extremely difficult to balance on this uh, steed. It was not made for a person of your size and stature, or at least that's the computer telling you it isn't. Uh, it bucks you off, and you come skidding to a halt down a... Let's down a shallow uh, slope, and you pick yourself up off, out of the snow. 
do I pick myself up out of the snow or does someone need to help me get myself out of the snow? <laughs> Let's say the other way. So uh, you try to get your bearings and are unable to do so. Well, this is unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll dismount and try to pull her out. <laughs> All right. So, as... Ah, dear Kifri, I see you have decided to partake and, and enjoy the, the purity of Andorian snow to see how uh, refreshing it is in person. We'll have a talk later about that. <laughs> as the two... No, no, don't be so short with them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it is not as fun as you think right now there's little humor in that <laughs> oh my gosh maybe a tiny bit uh, so if uh, Vallejo and Kithri could please roll me a perception test which I believe should be wisdom based okay. oh goodness yep Wisdom 13. Wisdom 13, and that's a 16 Wisdom, Yeah. Okay. 16 and 16. Okay, so Kithri, as you're beginning to sling an insult back, um, there's something in the wind that just doesn't sound quite right. Um, you're hearing a low growl. As you turn around, you see one of these uh, four-legged wolf-type creatures coming to you through the th through the thick fog it roars at you and you realize very quickly it's not roaring at you it's signaling its companions who have circled the wagons so to speak and are approaching from the other side and at this point we are going to enter something akin to initiative so what is going to happen here is in, we're just going to roll straight a flat d20 and we'll just go in that order if you wish to swap places with another person you are welcome to do so I'm not picky <laughs> okay okay so and a 20 for this one and now I have an additional rule because there are no this sort of relies on you know momentum and stuff like that but not really so I rolled a 20 which is a failure typically so that means that the players get one momentum and momentum can be used to make anything you can just be used to re-roll a dice, add a modifier, just add a cool effect, whatever you want to do with it. Um, so, who has it? Can I? Can I use call to action to no. yell at? Ah, okay, <laughs> just checking. Nope. Thought I'd ask. Get that out of the way. Nope, there's no such thing as focuses or star or okay. D20 stuff here. I was done it. Give, give a shot. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> Sorry, Helsing, I was going to try. <laughs> oh, well. Okay. Uh, could you fill out your place, your characters on the initiative, their values, please? Okay, um, Vallejo and Hakeem, uh, we're just missing those values. Am I listing actual values or my stats? Uh, just your, just the value of the d20 you rolled for the initiative. Oh. Yeah. I saw. Uh, yeah, so just roll me one d20, please. 18, cool. Now, and uh, kiss three, you got a 15. Cool. Okay, so the first, for the one rare time where Highest goes first, that will be this wolf. So, 
this wolf is going to attempt to pounce on Vallejo. Not with that score, it's not. And it will miss... It lands right beside you. Obviously, it has missed its action. And like D&D, I'm going to basically run this very fluid. If you have a cool thing you want to do, do it. Uh, if you want to say that you're moving somewhere and then doing something cool, also do it. The whole point is just to keep things going and flowing and not get bogged down in mechanics. Uh, so, Mr. Hakeem. Well, I might as well embrace it. I want to move towards the farthest wolf and attack. All right. So, roll me. Uh, now, are you using a light weapon or a heavy weapon? A light weapon. Okay, so that is going to be dexterity based. All right, and my dexterity is a 13. Okay. That is not going to do the trick, I'm afraid. <clears throat> You approach, you try to swing, but your sword just cuts through where you thought it was, only for it to disappear in a puff of uh, in a puff of a snowy gas to rematerialize just a second later. The waning sun glints on the several uh, aquamarine crystals that are embedded into its into its skin. Mr. Bugak. I will shall sing the ancient battles uh, song of the and Andorians to further inspire my, my comrades to fight harder. Okay. Uh, roll me a charisma test, please. And how does that song go? Uh, <laughs> dude. Fight as as though you, you were you were the blizzard. Come upon your enemies as as though you were the avalanche. Crush them beneath the frozen frozen waves and leave nothing behind. Excellent. Huh. I kind of like it. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. so for the remaining uh, for the remain remainder of the fight, you can subtract. Uh, let's say you can subtract one from every dice roll. And uh, that means that you make it better, not worse. Everybody or just Everyone. Lord Bugak? Um, nice. Bugak saying so that all of you can benefit from his voice. At least that was my intent, or my interpretation. Yep. I'm, in I'm inspired. You are indeed. Kithri. Yes. You have righted yourself, and a... Uh, Winter Canid has just implanted itself right next to your savior. Well, we're going to go ahead and try to smack it. Okay. And are you using a heavy weapon or a light weapon? Or what uh, weapon are you using, I should say? Bow staff, wasn't it? Yeah. Was it bow staff? Okay, cool. Wampum stick. Wamp <laughs> yeah, wampum stick, basically. Honestly, that's a weapon that could classify as either. So whichever stat you want to roll against for it, go for it. Uh, Dex was the other uh, uh, small, but what was the... Uh, strength for heavy weapon, dexterity for lighter weapon. I'll go with the strength. Okay. Uh, th because it's a 13. Cool. 12. Oh. Nice. Yo, whack it one. And so it takes one hit. It does not like that. Let's out a small whimper, which turns into a growl as it turns its uh, toothy maw at your in your direction. Next up is this one, which is going to circle around and then punch, or p not punch, pounce on Mr. Sunbringer. And with that roll, it will succeed. Uh, so, Mr. Sunbringer, you take one point of damage, and you have a you have a number of total hit points equal to your Constitution score. So that's as many hit points Check. as you can take. All right. Okay. Would you care to respond? I believe it's your turn. Oh, by all means. I have a whomping stick, but with a pointy end. 
Ah. Some would call it a spear. Excellent. Let's see how well you do with that spear. And it's a hit. That would definitely be a hit. Okay, this wolf takes one. You puncture, uh, you shatter one of its crystals with your tip, dislodging it from its dense, its dense fur. A uh, small spout of greenish blood uh, quickly spills out and recrystallizes. Vallejo, you're up. All right. As, you know, the wolf turns towards her, I will pull out the two ice blades and go at it. Go at it, please. And what? So that sounds like a dexterity type roll or strength? I was going strength. Cool. Uh, what's your strength? 16. Perfect. Okay, you take it, and it takes another point of damage. <clears throat> Wonderful. Next up is the final one, and it is going to attempt to repay Hakim with his early miss. And that is definitely going to hit. So, Hakim, you take one point of damage. And once again. Uh, top of the order again is the wolf, or the canid, is looking at Kithri when all of a sudden there were two pointies, or pointy uh, sticks in, it, in its side. So it's not happy with that. So it is going to attempt to lunge and bite at Miss Vallejo. And that is going to hit. So Vallejo, you take one point of damage as uh, one of its uh, clawed paws scrapes across your, uh, your arm. Now, oh, Hakim. Computer safety protocol status. Safety protocols are on. I just making sure. I trust my chief engineer, but you know, sometimes things can go wrong. <laughs> you talking about nothing no, 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 goes wrong when I'm here. Of course not. As I say while I drive try to drive my scimitar back into the wolf I'm engaged with. <laughs> and you do so. You drive the point home, so to speak. Mr. Bugak. I shall dance the ancient uh, Andorian dance to summon upon the ancient um, ice fairies to be laid upon my foes. Okay. That sounds like another spell. Is this going to be targeting a single creature or all of them? Or an area? Uh, I guess just one. Okay. So roll me a charisma text, please. Yep, that will definitely hit. Which one are you attacking? Uh... I guess this one? Sure. Your dance kicks up a bunch of free snow and some pebbles. And before your very eyes, they turn into small flickering light, balls of light. They all immediately yell, Hey, listen! And charge at the wolf. Ah, yes. The most feared of the, um, the fairies in Endorian folktale. I couldn't help myself. Oh, gosh. Uh, Kithri. Yes. Gonna go ahead and try to smack this wolf. Canine. All right. It's a 14. Um, what, minus, minus one, of course, for Bugak's <laughs> inspiration, which I believe gets ah, under your strength. So that, yep, 13, 13. That is it. And this wolf collapses. And it its body is blown away by the wind, leaving several green crystals. She was about to be really upset if there was not going to be anything left of it. <laughs> like, why? 
this one is going to let out a reverberating howl. So remember that uh, plus one bonus you got from being inspired from Mr. Bugak. Uh, the haunting howl is caught up in the wind and wraps around each of you, causing you to just momentarily forget that you were doing so well at kicking ass and starting to question your yourselves ever so slightly. So that one bonus is negated. And that's its turn. Next up is Mr. Sunbringer. We will go back into the one that was, I guess, we were fiddling with earlier. Mm -hmm. I believe... And I have a 13. I will do the trick. Cool beans. Are these creatures from Andor's past? That would be a his. That would be one of the very rare uh, history tests that I will allow an int plus or not int uh, reason plus con. Oh, I'll, plus I'll yell that out to one of the end to somebody else because ah. I have no idea. <laughs> Geology, I love. <laughs> Never seen anything like these. <laughs> if someone Is that something we should just roll now? Or? Yeah, if you want to roll it up, that's uh, it roll me an insight plus science test, I guess. Or reason science, either or, really. It's a difficulty one. Uh, does cultural study count? That'll work. That'll do. Andorians, the planet of Andor being as cold as it is, has spawned no end of uh, tales of creatures that materialize on cold winds to cause havoc or, or destruction, plague people, and then disappear just as quickly as they come. Uh, these are known as the Winter Canids, uh, creatures that uh, a group of crystals that are imbued with magical powers of the wind gain sentience and begin to pack up with other like-minded creatures they seek to continue to live by hunting uh, those who are foolish enough to brave the winters alone uh, so I say why yes housing these are um, true true creatures from uh from Andorius past. It is how, uh, by fighting such foes, Andorians became such fearsome fighters. So, any other way to beat him besides just hitting him with sticks? Hit them with pointy sticks? Pointy metal? Got yeah. it. Or magic. Magic works. True. Next up, Vallejo. Lieutenant, get me samples. <laughs> I can't. I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm heading heading towards uh, Sunbringer to uh, help him with his. <laughs> okay. And roll me a dice, please. That's a hit. And you have two weapons, correct? Cool. All right, so that deals that amount of damage. And this one goes down. You go to skewer it. And as you uh, skewer it with your ice blades, it lets its dreadful howl ceases. And the body just vaporizes around you dis uh, as it turns to dust and snow, leaving the crystals to clatter to the rocky floor be 
by your feet. Next up is the one that's attacking the captain. So what it's going to do is it's going to try to pin the captain in place. Yeah, I like to see it try. Yeah, that would be a first, wouldn't it? <laughs> Unfortunately not. Mm, let's see what happens here. Come on, dice. Roll. Yeah. Uh, so, Hakeem, you are knocked off your feet as you find yourself on uh, staring up at a snarling visage. Uh, two thoughts occur to you. One, holy cow, this ground is cold. And two... For a creature that literally flew in on the wind, this thing is awfully heavy. And would you care to do something about that, Hakeem? I most definitely will. Underneath my breath, I'm going to cheat. Okay. <laughs> Computer. <laughs> Power word killed. <laughs> the captain has found the console commands. <laughs> All right. This wolf just disappears entirely. It leaves no crystals no behind smoke, it. No smoke, <laughs> It just vanishes. And combat is over. I'm gonna get off off the ground, stand up, and start flexing. Oh man, I guess this program isn't as great as he thought it was. <laughs> well, Captain, you you have certainly been keeping up in, in your um. Your physical uh, close quarters combat uh, regime. Yeah, I try to be. I keep some weights in my uh, my quarters. You know, I don't always just go to the gym. You know, I've been working out. Oh, impressive. Perhaps you should join me in, in that um, that aerobics class uh, that I've, I've been taking that um, Helsing recommended to me. Sure, if you want to take my paperwork. Mm, you don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. It's not a good trade. I'm still doing some of that paperwork. I'm going to have to uh, pass on that one. Uh, all right. You are lucky that I've had forgotten about the horses. Otherwise, they would have eaten the horses. But you still have your horses, so yay. <clears throat> yay. <laughs> The journey continues, the winding path barely traveled by any sort of creature deemed close to sentient proves uh, rough and hazardous for many of your horses. Uh, several times, the sled that you're carrying your provisions on threatens to go over a gorge, causing you to stop, resecure everything, and it makes for a slow journey. However, you are still well within schedule. The, as the days pass, metaphorically, of course, no way in heck you guys are spending eight days on a holodeck. The, the sun rises a little less each day. The shadows it casts at its peak longer than the day before. Some days, you see absolutely nothing beyond your traveling companions. And at this point, if I could have, uh, who wishes to be at the fore of this caravan? I assume I would be here. <laughs> All right. Vallejo, you are at the... If I could ask for a perception test from you, please. You notice it quite well. There is a caravan approaching you from the other side. This is going to be difficult because you are meeting at a very narrow point in the valley. Thankfully, you are able to, or you are far more mobile, as they appear to have a actual full wagons worth of uh, goods and services. You can see as they approach that they are Andorian people. Call out to them. Uh, how far are they coming? Uh, or... That's not the right one. Uh, they are roughly 200 meters away. <clears throat> they, they, 
Their caravan comes to a halt. Their lanterns j uh, jiggle in the, or jiggle at the uh, ceasing of motion. Uh, one, the lead rider dismounts her, dismounts and approaches. I'll uh, dismount and head towards her and meet her. Yep. Now she is female, has the all the traditional Andorian markings, a heavy uh, fur cloak. Uh, she's carrying um, two my or two mining pickaxes, uh, known as Ushan. And she she would appear to be in her late fifties, early sixties. Well met, traveler. Well met. It is strange to see others upon this rare ro upon this road and going the going the wrong way. I might add. Are you what do you mean? Well, as the as the winter eclipse comes, very few people head to the village of Saratal. More are likely to flee it before this winter is over. We have been hired by a local village to take care of a creature that's been terrorizing them for generations. Ah, she scoffs. I would hardly call the city of Inaris Valdak a little village. It is to them that we hope to seek refuge from this coming winter. As you look into the caravan, you realize that it is full of uh, infirm, disabled, and uh, young children. These would not... The winters up here are harsh, and those who cannot survive it, and those who er, those who cannot work through it will not survive it. I, we hope that this year the vill the ice city will open its gates for, and provide its hospitality to us. Can we offer you any assistance? We would all. Yeah. Uh, Extra oh. food, rations, anything we can help with. She looks at your uh, ration sled. Yes, those ra those rations look far more edible than what we've been go than what we have. We have not had much food for this journey. the The workers of the <laughs> the workers of the village obviously have taken take what they need first and leave us to w with what we can for our journey we would not have enough to make it back if our pleas are refused are there many among your people that need healing she looks up you're a healer good sir if you I have been gifted by tear and I hold my hand looking skyward with some small measure of the healing art. Just because I find it funny. Let's see. As you uh, say the word tear, um, there's a bright, a slight break in clouds causing a narrow ray of sun to catch you on your golden armor, refracting the light, turning you into a disco ball. <laughs> Just... Oh, man. Just as Bugak had planned. She, her uh, her eyes lighten up as she immediately seems ten years younger. If there's anything you could do to aid and heal our... Or if there's anything you can do to aid or make their journey more comfortable, please do have a look, good sir. Look over to Vallejo and say... Shall we assist her? I was going to suggest we camp for the night with these people and uh, see what we can do to help and share our supplies. Um, perhaps your god can help with these sick individuals. Perhaps lay on medical bed or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds like a good thing. Uh, if uh, Mr. Sunbringer could roll me a wisdom roll or two, please. 
And while he's is doing... He... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, is he rolling for healing right now? Yeah, roll for healing. Yeah, um, Kithri will help out with the healing. Sure, both of you roll wisdom, please. That's a lot of healing. Uh, let's see. So the first one is a 20, which gives me one point of threat to spend at some point. Okay, so three of them. <laughs> And you lose that one point of threat. <laughs> no, you you gain one point. Of, you gain one point of momentum from that. Woohoo! All right. I have no idea why you rolled five d twenty, but several of those were successes. So <laughs> yeah, you, you told me to roll a couple. So. Yeah, that works. <laughs> okay, so those two are healing. If um, Hakim, Bugak, and Vallejo, could you please roll me a perception test? Uh, is that enough for your wisdom there, Th Thishran? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, so while Kithri and Sunbringer are busy seeing to aid the aid and provide comfort to the elderly in the truck, or in the, not the truck, the wagon, the children are running around camp, and uh, Bashir and Hakim, you catch them trying to go through your personal bags looking for stuff. Hey! They... Well, they... They immediately look up. They have their hands... or their, In their hand is a plump uh, fruit of some variety. They drop it and immediately scurry back. I lean over to the captain and basically is like... We don't need to eat here. Can we just give this to them? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's bad to get attached. We have a job to do. We also have the horses or the enduring horse-like animals. I mean, that is true. I mean, we do have to feed them as well. So, I mean, you gotta oh. remember. <laughs> you I was, gotta I was remember. thinking about them feeding us. Oh, well, all I'm saying is that I think we should, at least for the best of our ability, stay on mission. But if you feel like taking, if you feel like, you know, being charitable, and you feel like we have enough to spare, then by all means give up your portion. Okay, I will. I'll give them half. I will give them one fifth of the supplies. The GM will remember that. <laughs> uh, I'm this having fun. I don't have to be charitable here. Nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, you don't have to. The rest of the night passes with tales and song. Um, Kithri and Sunbringer do what you can but for the most part no amount of magical healing is going to stop old age or repair or regrow a uh, missing limb because I don't think oh you have a little face I don't know if you're that level or yet for regeneration there is that a... <laughs> greater restoration ah yes greater restoration definitely not that level yet <laughs> computer <laughs> repair this <laughs> individual's arm <laughs> look <laughs> computer give xp 20,000 <laughs> uh, let's not break the holodeck or the GM any further please <clears throat> at the end of your rest cycle it is still pitch black as the days are growing shorter you have you set out in pitch dark you bid goodbye to the Andorians that you have met along the way, and they they bid you farewell as uh, as well. Uh, thankfully, the woman has given you the name of her husband on at the in the village. Uh, his name is Ranquius, and he is a gruff but kind-hearted individual who will do what he can to to see you on your journey. 
Yes. But only one fifth of us. And, uh... <laughs> the the rest of the the rest of the day's journey is silence, except for Mister Bugak's uh, constant lute playing. Stars twinkle overhead, soon disappear into the uh, dawn of the of the next day, as the sun barely pokes through clouds and eventually you will find yourselves approaching in the distance a small village on an expansive sea despite the bleakness of the landscape uh, the village has taken itself to be to paint itself in bright colors of red and black and white. Okay, mostly red. Uh, For we have come upon Maine. <laughs> yes, yes, you have. <laughs> the The harsh coastline is uh, gives way to uh, tranquil seas, mostly frozen over, with some cracks in the ice still. In the distance, it looms your objective over, through across the sea just slightly over the horizon still rises a single peak uh, cold ominous and even now even though the day is bright there is still a dark pall that covers it however you have reached the village of Saratal and it is here where we will take a quick break so let's get back here at half past the hour and we shall see what happens next. And we are back. So uh, you approach the city or the village of Saratal, a small Andorian fishing um, village on the west on the west coast, Sim more or less similar to uh, um, Alaska, just much colder. Uh, the sea has not frozen this close to land yet, and there's signs of a small but bustling fishing fleet. You catch a sight of about ten boats actively in the water and several more several more moored up on the on the docks now blue skins of the andorians are seen stark against the red paint on the houses and the white uh, snowy ground it's not it's not yeah it's not yeah it's you blah, 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 blah. you guys are quickly seen as uh children playing uh, snowball fights are throwing throwing snow at one another quickly see you and run off to grab an adult you are met by an individual who wa uh, a muscular man uh, in his probably his late 60s if judging by human standard maybe early 70s he's walking on a uh, he's using a reperp a repurposed harpoon shaft as a cane. Right, what's all this, then? Some people coming to us Th this time of year. I find this to be quite unusual. Well met, travelers. Well met. Uh, I think we met your wife leaving the village on the trail up here. Uh, We've helped them with supplies, and we are on the way to... The mountain to slay the mighty beast. Ah, uh, so you met Sholdi. I'm glad to see that she me is well on her way. I do hope that the shitty of in of Inerish Valdak will allow the, her, her and her charges the rest that they need. So, you seek the, you seek to make your way to Cashaldine Peak. As he raises a large bushy eyebrow. That is a perilous journey this time of year over the ice fields. 
hey, we're being paid paid well and to slay this creature to free the land from its tyranny. Hmm. Did I get that right? Yes, yes, you did. <laughs> I was talking to the crew. <laughs> did I get that right? <laughs> yes. I believe so. <laughs> I just kind of shrug. <laughs> <laughs> of course, after all, we we cannot allow this this noble lineage of the um, Andorians to to die out. Why? It'd be a a grave injustice to the entire galaxy if if the Andorians weren't around. Why? Yes, that is a great, a great and noble quest. Do please stay with us this evening, with the with those who have vacated their homes. We have many beds. We do not have much in the way of food, however. We are on strict rations. But, and of course, there's a glint in his eye. We will have to talk payment if you were, if you wish to take one of our vessels. I don't really think it's wise for us to stay the night. I mean, we do have to be there before, you know, and I start tapping my wrist. It's like... I turn around. Oh, Hakim, have you have you learned the uh, the ancient art of um, rhythmic wrist tapping? <laughs> it it is a is a a uh, very fascinating uh, supplement to my my tap dancing. If you if you're interested, we could perhaps uh, c combine forces to um, create a a uh, very interesting performance afterwards. But perhaps you, you'll need some additional um, accessories to amplify the sound of your of your rhythmic wrist, wrist tapping. I understand at this point you're, you're probably still a novice at it, but it's something to consider. Yeah, on second and thoughts, on second thoughts, staying the night doesn't seem that bad. Do we get our own rooms? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Oh, I'm sorry. That just came out of nowhere. <laughs> okay. <sighs> <clears throat> The shred has no idea what 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 tapping a wrist means because they don't have watches. Yep. No, that's. We will be honored with your hospitality, and we will provide some food for and discuss terms for passage. Ah, yes, that sounds quite amenable. I'm afraid that we do not have individual rooms. However, I can give you uh, berths in our longhouse. By all means, lead the way, sir. Oh, yes. I appreciate your hospitality. He... Whatever gets me out of doing a dance routine with this man. <laughs> uh, he slams his um, quote-unquote walking stick uh, three times on the solid rock as his a younger Andorian female approaches. Definitely a working woman. Uh, bulk, or buff, muscly, muscular. And it probably looks like she could crush a watermelon between her biceps. <clears throat> uh, she's my daughter, April. She will show you to your rooms. April, be nice to our guests. And with that, he will saunter away down to the docks. Ah, charmed, I'm sure. She nods. And, uh, Hakim, you do not need to uh, make a whiz, uh, perception check to notice the giant um, smile and dazzling eyes as she winks at you. If you will follow me. As, as we're walking over, I... I... I uh, notice we look over at uh, Valau's arms and see if her biceps are that big. No, they are definitely not. Hmm. Well, it looks like uh, from the the transition over um, away from Andorian to this other race, it seems to have um, shrunken your your bicep muscles are slightly there. Lieutenant Commander. <laughs> I mean, we we all knew that that transforming, um, changing out out of the Andorian form would have some um, disadvantages from, but you know, I'm still trying to, to figure out why you chose 
this body and this little breastplate that I received. Oh, like I said, it, you have to take into account um, what could happen in a possible transport accident in case you find yourself within a different body. You know, just to make sure you, you don't run into any problems with body dysmorphia. Like me? <laughs> yeah. It's a learning experience. Commander, I'm wearing a metallic bra and a mini skirt. This does not seem like armor to me in any form. Oh, but please, it's not like the cold is going to bother you. Agreed. Lead on, please. <laughs> Just let it go. Let it go. Uh, no. Palaio's legs go look good at least. <laughs> Like, just look. Remember, Lieutenant, I, this science lab still needs to be cleaned. <laughs> <laughs> and we keep having a bunch of your visitors in the brig, and those can be cleaned as well. Mm. Ah, you guys have learned to delegate. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I didn't know what a brig is, or what the science lab is, and why it needs cleaning. But I do must say that our that what we can offer you is as clean as possible under the circumstances. Now, why don't I take you to him? It's not often I get to play Irish on these sort of streams. It's kind of fun. Okay, as April takes, April leads the group of you, and she not so uh, stealthily attempts to slide her arm between. Her, Hers and Hakeem's. See, Captain, your uh, rhythmic wrist tapping has in enamored um, the, the local residents. So, I'm. It seems like you have been paying attention to to what what I've been um, thus since I've been espousing all along. As I hear the trans come words come in one ear and out the other, I'm just going to. <laughs> awkwardly fumble about myself and twist and turn i'm just like oh sorry what sorry is my sword on <laughs> and just immediately just break off this contact <laughs> i am going to accidentally bump into the captain and put the little crystal flower that i was given <laughs> on his lapel <laughs> roll me a dexterity roll absolutely it, i will Absolutely. Pure fan fiction material right here. <laughs> well, oh! that's uh, uh. 20. <laughs> but because I find it humorous, I'm going to spend my one point of threat to say that you do it anyways. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. And you stick him with the pen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, there you go. It'll still be bad, but it'll, yeah, it'll work. I just can't just hit stab him with it. <laughs> Apriel, um, after uh, letting go of the captain, she you know, takes a look at his uh, breastplate. Oh, my captain. I didn't know that you had, that you were such a kind of gentle soul. Yes, while while coming here, um, our dear Hakim looked up the um, the traditional Andorian courtship rituals, not noticing that these flowers are the um, traditional gift one would give up upon um, formal okay, initiation for of courtship. Mate. Yes, I am nothing if not worldly. Well, I grit my teeth. <laughs> oh, my, Mr. Hakim, you, I do. Ah, I. I do wish that you could tell me some more of your tales, perhaps in private this evening. I'm sure once our arrangements are properly taken care of, I'll be able to answer any questions you may like. However, I'm sure the rest of my party has tales just as great as what anything that I may be able to provide. Believe me, some of us are just along for the ride. <laughs> as I glare at Lord Bugak. <laughs> It's like, I wasn't the one who presented the flower. Hmm. Uh. So, April, is, uh, April is kind enough and intelligent enough to know when she's being rebuffed. She nods and politely smiles. 
Anyways, if there be ah ah, I find it very difficult to slip into that accent. If you need anything, do please ring the bell outside, and what and I or my father will come and see what we can do for you. Where is the dining hall? I have enough supplies to feed the entire town for your hospitality and possibly talk of the boat rental. Ah, you wish to trade food for transport? Yes. Well, my father would be most pleased. Apparently I'm now gone British. Okay, cool. Her accent's just all over the place. That's a great history for you. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she gives you the... Uh, she points to the large dining hall. It's not hard to miss. One of the largest buildings in the... Um, one of the largest buildings. It is the large white one. Dead center of town. Okay. The one, the one that she was standing in front of. <laughs> yes, the one that she was standing in front of. Preventing you from seeing. Right. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, once we get settled in, I'm going to sneak over there and um, basically make sure nobody's around whatsoever. Okay. And... I don't know if you want me to make a stealth check. Yeah, <laughs> roll me a stealth. Why not? Roll dexterity. <laughs> okay. Uh, give me one second. I walked away from the laptop. <laughs> wow. Oh my god! What is okay. that? So I'll take that point of threat. <laughs> uh, you wander pa into the dining hall and you do not see a single person. All right. So I will go computer. Uh, fill this room full of local cuisine and uh, for a banquet and party. Those are some rations. <laughs> and a banquet. The empty dining hall is filled, similar to the... Um, Scene from Harry Potter, where food literally materializes out of the table. Harry who? <laughs> Another IP. Yes. Cross, never cross the genres, unless it's with Sean Connery, in which case it's always Sean Connery. Goodness, lad, he says as he walks in. Goodness, lass. Where did all this food come from? I was unaware that you, your beasts of burden could carry this much. We pack tight. And this is outstanding. Uh, his eyes agog at the amount of food. Lash, you have certainly paid for a for a boat. In this case, I don't actually care if it ever comes back, although I prefer that it does. But we could feed the entire village for an entire month with this amount of food. Please don't, because it probably will expire before then. <laughs> I mean, it is pretty cold up here. It's it's acts as a natural preserver. Yes, but this uh, this delicacy known as the um, Endorian Sea Camel only lasts for a uh, short period of uh, three hours before it starts to um, rot. But in the meantime, it is a very very flavorful delicacy. So just like my attention span. Gotcha. <laughs> Ranquish, uh, Ranquis rings the bell and yells, We have food for the evening. As much as you want. Do come. Grab. Bring the children. Bring your wives. Bring, your, bring those who t uh. typically do not work. We have guests and they have brought us food. Technically, it's Andor, so shouldn't you bring your wives uh, and yeah. husband and <laughs> yeah, the wife and bring your shrubs or um ah, Andorians mate or Andorians are mate in fours, and I forget the technical terms for each gender, but yes. yeah, I can't. I didn't even tell you that off the top of my head. It's like <laughs> shens and jaws and cousin, right? But yes, bring your partner, br bring your children. Help, bring any pets too. <laughs> you can feed your pets. Mm. 
there's a few small dogs maybe a small canine or feline type creature and a rat let's call them two rats are fighting over a sausage uh, Rehnquist and his daughter are at the head of the table it's very obvious who the uh, uh, chief of this village is um, Apriel's uh, piercing eyes keep settling on Hakim for overly long periods of time before drifting off as she attempts to make light conversation with the rest of the party. That's okay. so I'd oh, sorry, go ahead. I'd like to uh, stealthily uh, call up the computer or tap my com badge away okay. from everybody else. All right. And access the uh, pro the interpersonals of the of the characters in this program. Okay. Access. And I'd like to change. I'd like to change app computer. Change character Apriel's accent to mm, let's say Earth Australian. <laughs> confirmed changes. <laughs> changes confirmed. <sighs> Resume. Uh, right. <laughs> I, I walk over to Apriel and say, "What do you know of Nagra Nagra Jindalex?" Uh, sorry, who are you asking, Apriel? Uh, Apriel. Oh. Ah, yeah. Of course. Oh, he's a right mug, a right bugger, ain't he? That beast thinks he can fly all over the place. She covers us all in sheets of ice. I so cold it would freeze our antennae right off. Apparently, I'm going Scottish. Okay. Yep. That's uh, not Australian. No, that's at not all. Australian. Right? <laughs> well, okay. Right. Right. Let's do this Australian. Right? <laughs> there you <laughs> go. Yeah. Bloody right. <laughs> oh yeah, bloody right. That, that righteous. Bloody that righteous wrecker of a party. Nope. Scottish is where it's going to be. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lishran, you need to check on the computers. Uh, no I will. It's just, it's just been an error in the uh, in yeah. the accent database. database. <laughs> oh, I could use it to Australian so well, but I've gotten so much into Connery, it's hard to change. Uh, practice needs yeah, to be done. You, Anyways, yeah. Go full Connery. She, also, the Australians typically say things that would get me uh, or ELH demonetized. So I'd rather not say many of the things that they say. Anyways, yeah, he's a right bugger. He flies out. He thinks he's Shooting he out the... apologies to anyone watching us in Australia right yes. now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, my right crikey. <laughs> right. See, what he does is he comes out of the mountain sea, and then he just decides to freeze the... Uh, whatever parts of the land are not frozen become frozen immediately just by a beat of his massive wings and his eyes those are the scariest of them all they can hunt down a single Andorian from high up swoop down bite the head clean off and swoop right back up before anything anyone knows that he's gone and she shakes her head it's a right shame Thankfully, we are far too small a, and insignificant for him to give much more than any, anything other than a f passing glance. That, that's good to hear, at least. Right. Right. Now, who's seen me pipes? And she pulls out a didgeridoo. <laughs> I may not be able to do an Australian accent, but I can do a didgeridoo. Good enough. Yep, good enough. And with that, the... And the uh, Kithri, as you guys are parting through the evening... Um, Rehnquist comes over and looks down at you. Ah, lass, I was unaware that they let tr children travel with them. What's your story? And apparently Kithri's just so stunned by the question. 
Oh, it cut out. I didn't catch part oh. of it. Ah, uh, oh, lass. I was unaware that they let children travel. Wow. I beg your pardon? <laughs> oh, is she your father? And he gestures to Garen. <laughs> She's gonna look over to Garen and be like, Him? <laughs> no, no, he is not my father. Ah, oh, she. So you're just looking to make your own way in the world. I can respect that. Yes, I, I'm just... Uh, born this way, we'll say that. Ah, dwarfish him. I'm s smaller, but yes. <laughs> he nods. Well, eat hearty, Lash. You have a long day ahead of you on the she. She just looks at the food <laughs> thinking, I don't know how I'm going to eat all this. Well, thankfully, you don't have to, because it is the end of the chapter. And you are materialize. The holodeck... <laughs> storm on the water. <laughs> the holodeck reorients itself. And finds yourself on... Or finds you on the docks of the village. Looking out over a frozen sea. Or a freezing sea, I should say. Uh, several ice drifts are plowing into one another. Shearing one another, each other off as the sea slowly uh, begins to... Begins to freeze ever more solid as the sun, as the temperatures continue to drop. Uh, you find yourself on a fairly sturdy uh, keeled vessel. Uh, it appears to be made of. It appears to be made of a very hard wood. Uh, and Dorians might recognize the term ironwood. Whether or not it is a historically accurate piece of technology, it is what it is. Um, copy the tokens. There we go. <clears throat> there we go. Uh, you you look back uh, at the uh, waving or at the uh, fishermen slowly departing in the distance. Go get them, lads! You hear a river, a distant call on the winds. Follow followed up by "fuck them up right good." From a female voice, apparently doing an Australian Scottish, because that is what the GM's voice is doing these days. I will practice next time someone throws an accent my way. <clears throat> so, uh, who, whoever is going... So what I need to do for a successful check of boating is people on the oars. So one person on oars is going to need to roll strength. Person navigating is going to roll me either intelligence or wisdom. And if anyone wants to do spells or magic to somehow help the weather or help your party, part party, now's the time to do it. I will roll the row. I, I can do. I can do row as well. Okay. I can inspire the the party. All right. Sea shanties. Sea shanties. <laughs> Who knows a good sea shanty? Well, uh, Bashir, you roll good strength. What would you do with a drunken Andor? What will you do with a drunken Andor? <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Everyone seems to be succeeding. Fantastic. <clears throat> who's guy? Who's navigating? Yeah, I shall navigate. <laughs> All right, Captain, Mr. Hakeem, please roll. Nice rolls. There are se there are several close calls as uh, ice flows begin to change directions uh, suddenly. and But it is, uh, it's a testament to the sturdiness of the boat and the intelligence of the navigator and just the strength of the people pulling the oars, as well as Mr. Bugak singing from time to time, Hard a port! 
and you guys are able to make it, but it is cutting it fairly close as you reach the bottom of the mountain. Or you reach the aisle of the mountain just as the sun begins to set. And by your calculations, you have one last... You'll have to make it to peak before sundown. The peaks is a very tor torturous one, or not torturous, a formidable peak, stretches before you, uh, several thousand feet up. It's going to take, it's going to take a journey to get up there in w as long as you have. Uh, let's see. GM has not written his notes properly, I apologize. The sun has set, and you need to make it up there before the sun rises again. Or the sun sets again, I should say. For if the sun rises a second time, it might be too late. I hope I made sense. We gotta get up the mountain. Very important. Yeah. There's the only way to get up there quickly. All right, well, do we have any uh, climbing gear within the rest of our supplies here? Yes, the su assuming uh, Bashir didn't give it to the villagers for food, <clears throat> then yes, you do. Strapping it on, and at this point, I would like to have some strength checks or some wisdom checks for either, from both of, from all of you, I should say. Let's do it. Oh, oh. <laughs> wow, you're all rolling very well. Uh, Hakeem, what's your strength? Ten. Okay. <clears throat> oh. Ooh. Can we use one of those momentum for someone to make a... Absolutely. So you can either spend a the really momentum cool... to automatically succeed, re-roll, do something cool, however you want to do it. I'll do a, use it to really cool to save Hakeem from falling. Okay. So Hakeem, you there is the traditional um, or is there is the uh, tropey scene where you lose your grip halfway up and begin to fall. Uh, thankfully, Garen Sunbringer reaches out and grasps your outstretched hand. Fear not, friend Hakeem. Here is here to protect all. Is that getting into character? Yes, as I'm falling. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. So who's uh, going to catch I, Bashir now? Yeah, I will. Um, Bugak will uh, sing an ancient song to have uh, fairies spring up and uh, grab the edges of um, of his clothes and just kind of lift him up, a little bit of lift to get him up there. Okay. Uh, roll me charisma, please. So I use the, do I use the momentum for that? If you want to. Uh, yeah, I'll just use a moment for that. Okay, then you don't need to roll. You are able to, uh, as uh, v Vallejo, you feel gravity decide to give up on pulling you down, and you're stunned for a few seconds as you see several f uh, small pixies yelling at you to, hey, listen, as they pull you back up towards a solid ground. And that's made you about to the halfway up. <clears throat> so um, that takes several hours to get through the most treacherous parts of the ever shifting ice of the ever shifting ice flows. It's extremely treacherous work, and you take several bumps, bruises, and a couple slips here and there. But overall, the trip is. Well, except for a couple of you, the trip is fun, almost. Uh, Kithri, just, um, you're wondering what all the fuss is about, because you're so light, this climb doesn't seem all that difficult to you. I'm having, a, I'm having some fun doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me! Um, 
that one of us isn't on the other side of gravity. <laughs> and finally, actually, gravity is foremost on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, I gotta enjoy it while I can. <laughs> You reach the peak, and in you d it's impossible to see it from the ground, but once you get up to the top of the mountain, you're able to see a small cleft uh, in, the ca in the rocks, which has been uh, snowed over, covering it from casual view. Inside, uh, ah, I should say, as you begin to descend into the cave, you feel an electrical force pushing against you. Uh, it's clear that this is probably the wards that were mentioned. And at this point, I need someone who might know something about magic to roll me an intelligence test, please. I could try. Intelligence is uh, not a great stat. You can also try my hand at it. Mm -hmm. Nope. <laughs> and would you believe I got it using my dump stat? Oh, <laughs> oh look at that. Uh, uh, the resident wizard once ooh! again. Oh. <laughs> this is the religious. Oh, yeah. oh right. You're not, you're not a wizard. Party player, member. Still. Yes. Uh, so. It's my dump <laughs> Uh, between the two clerics, or the cleric and the paladin, uh, both of you recognize uh, seals of um, ah, uh, seals of warding. But w it's very interesting because usually seals of warding are placed to keep um, things locked in. In this case, their energies are reversed. Someone has reversed their polarity, so to speak. In which case, they are preventing outsiders from getting in. That's one way to do it. The door's locked, sir. Take a phaser and uh, <laughs> set it to... <laughs> now, can we see the wards? Uh, yes. Um, just inside the... Let's just call it a force field. Inside the force field, you see a, cir a circle out... Um, roughly uh, four feet in diameter. Uh, there are six glyphs of arcane mutterings in around it, and each glyph is connected to another through two lines. And based on how well we roll, do we get any idea if we have to destroy all the the glyphs one of the glyphs ah that's the that's the great thing is the glyph itself is already starting to fade uh, in fact if you recall from the velu the glyphs will the gl the warding glyph will fail once the sun sets the one final time and after that the dra the dragon will awaken but it will take some time for it to gain its full power and during that time is the time that you must strike. So if you it have... Looks like... Oh, I apologize. Go, Go ahead, ahead, sir. My bad. Go ahead. So if you have any preparation to do, now's the time to do it. Roger, it looks like we got here just in time. If you remember back upon what we were told in the original Siffy, is that who it was? Ah, uh, yes. Siffy and told us that the wards would slowly wear away as a dragon woke up and we're getting here now just as this the seal is getting ready to open do we have any idea is there any way that we can break the seals to get in there before he wakes up or what about we reverse the seals as a fallback plan it's easier sure. to keep people out now we could reverse it to keep them in let's say just on the off chance we're not able to vanquish 
this mighty beast. We keep him contained. Just saying. I mean, these glyphs were designed to keep people out. Do we have the strength to strengthen them to keep him in? We just turn them 180 degrees. Is that how magic works? Computer. <laughs> no, I won't cheat. Yeah, who would do that? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> well, just a thought. But the seals are are wearing down, and as soon as they're down, the dragon will begin to awake, <laughs> and that's we have to be there before he's fully awake. Well, I don't necessarily feel like waiting around for that to happen. If everything that everybody else is told is is true. And this dragon, or whatever lies within this mountain, is still at its weakest here before these these words go down. I rather strike while the iron's hot. So I want to attempt to pull out my sword and see if I could just cut my way through. Ah, okay. Roll me a. Uh, this is going to be a strength test, and because of what you're going to do, I'm going to imply or apply a minus two penalty to the result. Minus two or plus two. Plus for two us. penalty. So four. So instead of a twelve, that's a fourteen. Gotcha. What's your strength? Ten. A ten. Your sword connects with the force shield, and reverberates, uh, very similar to, a wild, uh, very similar to wily coyote smacking, into a uh, brick wall, <laughs> chasing the road runner who has mysteriously run through it. You take one point of damage as a sharp electrical current zaps right through you. Can I try to use my magic to call upon the uh, the nature spirits in the area to uh, help us with the seal? Yes, absolutely. Roll me a charisma. Wow. The spirits are able to come to your aid. Uh, a white, ah, a out of nowhere, a blizzard whips up, uh, not harming anyone. And as it subsides, a miss, a figure of gold and white steps forward. Uh, her her skin uh, catches and reflects the sunlight with the. Um, with the delicacy of new fallen snow, uh, she gra she gently lays her cold, f uh, or uh, she gr gracefully runs her long slender hands across your face and shoulder. Just <clears throat> just this one time, my love, but you owe me. And with that, she steps into the uh, warding field. There is a stark crackle of electrical energies and the field disintegrates. Uh, th you see three of the runes go dead. Sir, at this point, I call upon the power of Tyr and the ancient warrior known as Leroy Jenkins. Oh my god. Okay. And how do you wish to direct Leroy Jenkins? Forward into the opening. All right. Give me a split second while the GM let loose a massive cough while muted. <laughs> I think it was being the D and D spell of Spirit Guardian. <coughs> <clears throat> ah, apologies for that. Okay, so Leroy is going to try to take out the rest of the force shield. Oh, I thought the shield was down. Oh, okay, so you're having him. So you are leading a vestigial charge. Uh, do me a favor, please, and roll me a wisdom. Uh, 
Yeah, okay. I say it like, do me a favor as if I'm giving you a choice. Okay. <laughs> right? Yeah. My, I knew my choices didn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Mr. Sunbringer, you are, you are overcome with the divine urge to shout a battle cry and lead the charge into the uh, into the darkest dungeons beneath. <clears throat> and I don't want to blow out anybody's speakers. That's all right. Okay. You find yourself <clears throat> in this cave. So... The great white dragon, Nagrajindulix, is still snoring. Uh, puffs of uh, frozen uh, uh, puffs of frozen air exude from his nostrils and mouth every time he exhales, and the in and the snores reverberate through the chasm. The uh, you, not only do you see that great sleeping dragon. But you also see that he, he is asleep on a pile, and I say a pile, of 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 weapons, uh, frozen uh, of weapons, statues, books, gold, jewelry, any anything that is could hold value to someone. He seems to have at least some of which in his possession. It's a big Varengi. <laughs> so, Rule of acquisition. Go ahead. No, go on. <clears throat> Believe me, you first. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm open to ideas. Please, Captain. <laughs> uh, honestly, I would... I, th I thought all this time that dragon was suited him for something else. <laughs> it looks like an actual dragon. I gotta say, I'm slightly disappointed. Uh, yeah, um, honestly, Captain, me too. I was assuming some computer that was uh, <laughs> trying to control the, uh, the ice, but um, alas, it's an actual dragon. We can make it bigger. <laughs> Can make it smaller too. <laughs> True. Is that better? <laughs> yeah. That's probably more historically accurate, right? I mean, Kithri yeah. sees it as a little larger than anyone else, anyways. So. Yeah. It's all relative. <laughs> the objects in the rearview mirror. Yeah. Uh, so basically, what's going to happen is you guys get one f action each before the dragon can do anything. Helsing's first action will be to call a phaser mark three. <laughs> <laughs> so let's all Quantum roll. torpedo. Let's all roll a one D twenty please, and then just add that value to your initiative score. Uh, whoops, hang on. I... Just... Now's the time for the twenty. We do that. There we go. <clears throat> Okay, so Okay, Nadrodin Thulax does okay. And uh is that your eleven there, Kithri? Yes. Cool. And Vallejo got a five again. I think of the gas station. Gas station? Yeah, there's a Vallejo gas station company, I think. Oh, it's ha! Yeah, it's that's down awesome. here. Ha! They also make good uh, miniature paints. Not too. Yeah, see, that's where I was yeah. going with is Vallejo, the artist, yeah. Huh. Yeah, I know the paints. Um, Hakeem, I don't see a 20 from you, or a D20 from you yet. Oh, no, there it is, 20. 
don't mind me, I'm just programmed to ignore criticals. Okay, uh, Mr. Hakim, you are the captain, and therefore, first action is yours. Oh, boy. Well, never said I wouldn't put on a good show here. I'd like to see if I could attempt to stun this dragon. Okay. And take it by surprise. That sounds good. That's... I'm going to lean over to Helsing, at least he's not going to erase its memory. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Maybe. We'll, we'll see what happens. Okay. Uh, that sounds like a good strength check. Not with that roll, I'm afraid. Unfortunately not. Uh, you, all you do with that is it lets out a massive snort and readjusts its sleeping form as you go to attack it causing your uh, action to miss and la instead behead a poor statue that has done absolutely nothing to harm you or threaten you in fact that was probably a ancient andorian king of some sort and you've just defaced its statue well done next up mr sunbringer it will be the spear okay of my ancestors And I have a 13 for strength. Then that will do the trick. Okay, so you... And because it's asleep, I will grant you one additional point of damage. Because who says I'm not a heartless GM? Not me. We'll, we'll see next round. <laughs> that too, yes. Okay. Uh, next up is him. He's asleep. Kith, three... Uh, she'll go ahead and whack it with the spear, or not spear, I'm sorry, staff. Hey, don't forget you are a cleric. You could call down your magic gods, or your gods' I powerful magic. But would that be a wisdom? That would be wisdom, yes. I'll do that. Okay, and what form does your gods' magic take? Uh, <laughs> a book. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a god of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> if yeah, a book. Okay. Old bearded wizard. So a bearded wizard with a book comes down and smites the dragon? Yes. <laughs> okay. I like it. If he shouts, wake up, that'd be even funnier in my opinion for some <laughs> reason <laughs> okay wake up you fool boom <laughs> fantastic okay you summon an avatar of your god it appears before you and you tell it to see that sleeping thing hit it it wonders why it could do that when it could do, impart the some total of knowledge on this world into you but instead we'll follow your command and <laughs> Smack the dragon upside the head. Uh, Valeo. Okay, I am going to be super dramatic and basically jump up in the air and cut it with the two blades. Go for it. Roll me dex. Well, uh, th thank goodness for your uh, the form that the holodeck computer has given you. You're not, you're not entirely sure you could have pulled this maneuver off in your typical fleshy body, but uh, you lun leap into the air, do a f fancy little twirl, pull out both of your ice swords, and jab it deep into the dragon's neck. It, if it wasn't awake then, it is definitely now as it lets out a startled shriek of anger that causes several icicles to fall. But it's not its turn yet, so it can't obviously do anything of any note. So, Mr. Bugak. I will um, once again use my dancing to summon the, uh, the ice spirit to try to send ice shards through its wings. Ah. All right. Romy Charisma. Cool. 
Okay, so you can either do deal it damage or negate its ability to fly. Which do you wish to do? Uh, I'll try to negate its ability to fly. Cool. Okay, so instead of not doing damage, it just won't be able to fly. GM sad. Icicles come down and pierce <laughs> yeah. the wings. Oh yes, several of the uh, several of the ice spirits materialize around you. They each grab small icicle shards, and with a charge. That sounds similar to a bunch of rodents going, Get them! They uh, fly at the dragon, piercing its veiny wings. The dragon is fully awake now, and is now actually able to do stuff. But it's still struggling to figure out what the heck is going on, as it's Mr. Hakim's turn. Alright, well... I'm actually going to see if I can attempt to sneak away and go into stealth. Okay. Uh, dexterity, please. That's quite the opposite of stealth, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you slip and fall on ice. And... Where'd the captain go? <laughs> the, the captain slipped, fell, and went down a chasm. No. Uh, the captain... Yeah, so you don't enter stealth, but what do you wish to do other than that? <laughs> well, as I'm slipping, well, as I'm slipping and falling and trying to regain my balance in this ice cave, I'm just going to uh, say, you know what? I just, I just can't get into this setting. The sword just isn't doing it to me. Computer, give me a Klingon backlift. Acknowledged. And your sword. Four point three kilos. <clears throat> your sword vanishes and is replaced with a batleth. Yeah. Sorry, I just gotta do what I... I come from a far-off land. I gotta stick to what I know. <laughs> <coughs> Apologies. Okay. Mr. Sunbringer. We'll go back in with a mighty strike. And okay. should I hit, we will channel the force and power of my god into the strike. Okay, so roll me a strength check first. That's oh yeah. Yep. And roll me a charisma test. Or no wisdom test, sorry. Yeah. That as well. Your Your righteous fury. Uh, as your uh, spear strikes home, the computer generates a golden aura leeching from your hands to the spear, and it's uh, causes the and then it ejects forcefully into the creature, <clears throat> causing light to emit from several different orifices, as the dragon reels back. And now it is the dragon's turn. Now I need a. Um, I'd like each of you to please roll me a dexterity test, please. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, thank goodness. <laughs> oh. Let's see. Uh, this isn't Hakeem's day. Nope. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sunbringer, is that 14? That's a fail? I'm a 10 on Dex. Yeah. So uh, you fail. Vayed succeeds. Hakeem probably fails. That's a succeed from that. And that's a succeed from Bashir. <clears throat> so both um, Hakeem and... Garen, take two points of damage as the icy breath of the dragon washes over you. Uh, the rest of you only take one point of damage. The dragon attempts to gain altitude by flapping, but winces in pain as it does so. Uh, instead, it attempts to barrel through all of you, attempting to get out into the open. Um, if I can have, have Garen, please roll me a strength test. Nope, don't bother. That's a critical fail for Mr. Dragon. Uh, Garen... And that's a little fail for me. Well, yeah, but he failed harder, so you win by default. And that gives us some momentum, so we yeah. can make this epic ending. Yes, it does. 
the, the dragon attempts to get up. It stumbles forward in its sort of angry, sleepy state and trips over Garen's spear, crashing again, causing several more icicles to fall. Next up is Kithri. Yes. Now, are there any limits to spells? With so long as it's not, you know, caught, you know, bringing Armageddon down from the sky, just go nuts. Okay. Firestorm. Keep it around a Firestorm. keep it around a fifth a fifth level character. Okay. So that'd be like third level spells. Yeah, third level spells. Dancing lights. <laughs> Dancing lights. I'm basically going for a rule of cool here. Gotcha. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to get the avatar of my deity to smack this dragon with a book again. Okay. Uh, roll, roll me. Well, yeah. Heck <laughs> yeah. On it, the nose, of course. It goes. Yes. Literally goes, seriously, I could teach you laws of physics you have yet to dream of, but okay. Boom. Bad dragon. I like the fact that this is now a grumpy wizard. <laughs> Are you, uh, okay, uh, that deals that much damage to it. <clears throat> Next up is Vallejo. All right. Dramatic blade cutting across its throat. <laughs> Go for it. <clears throat> Barely. <laughs> Barely, but that's a success. Yes. A, um, uh, bleh. <clears throat> liquid so cold, or, yeah, liquid so cold that it uh, sublimates straight, or that it immediately boils once it hits even this cold temperature spews forth from veins deep within the uh, ice dragon's neck. It begins hissing. So that's sort of like liquid nitrogen, really. <clears throat> and it is definitely not very happy. It's definitely still alive, but definitely not very happy. Mr. As B it sprays on me, mm -hmm. Lashran, metal bikini! <laughs> <laughs> think a bit uh perhaps there's a bit of historical accuracy in terms of um contemporary wear at the time uh i will summon a um spiritual version of a troop of dancers performing river dance upon the dragon's head okay that sounds hilarious all right oh, i love that it had only one hit point left before you did this <laughs> with the uh, I don't actually remember what the dancer's name is but with but uh, Flatterly thank you Flatterly, Flatterly. Uh, Michael Flatterly thank you out of nowhere a Irish jig comes out of uh, begins to echo through the cave solidifying or the sounds begin to uh, solidify all around the dragon turning into mists and forming on top of it as a troop of four dancers. They are wearing heavy boots and are beginning to do a number on the dragon's protruding uh, spine, wings, skull. The rest of you just sort of stand back in horror or maybe uh, amuse amazement probably a little of both as the as the liquid nitrogen blood from the dragon begins to turn into uh, hissing gas which only adds to the atmosphere and eventually as it's brought to a uh, bone chilling crescendo there is the final denouement the final da da as all four dancers do a coordinated leap 
and a quick one, two, three with their boots on top of whatever poor part of the dragon is there. And the dragon is completely and utterly flattened. And congratulations, that was a Song of Ice, at least. Not much fire, but there was some ice. The Song of Ice has killed the dragon. Congratulations. And that, my friends, is uh, a key component of Andorian history that we have lived. Death by interpretive dance. Yes. <laughs> I feel so you, as you can see, it's a witness this. It's a time-honored tradition and a key part of uh, of our culture. Andorian jigs are now a thing. I love it. Yeah. Okay. It's a great aerobic workout. So you should be able yeah. to hang with the. Uh... Master Chief Knowles aerobic class. Oh, definitely. Upon its death, there is just enough time for you all to stand around and congratulate yourself before the scene transitions and you are once again transported back to the city of, Iner of, Ineris, of Ineris Valdak with the Velu. Udro and her partner Sifi. There is no sunlight. Uh, the sun has set for the final time this season, and it will not and it will not rise again for several months. However, this is a day of joy within the city. And somehow we transported the dragon's head on a cart. I don't know how, <laughs> but you know, I'm just saying we actually are standing there in front of the dragon's head. <laughs> oh, of course, because what point of saying the dragon's dead without actually right bringing... without bringing the yeah precisely. <laughs> uh, you have uh, you have the dragon's head as well as a decent portion of the loot, at least as much as the boat was able to carry on its way back. Udro and Sifi, after a great long speech, congratulate each of you and say that you are welcome to stay as long as you wish. Or, should you wish to make your way back home, they will provide transport and services to carry your earnings. Uh... I mean, Bugaku will offer to stick around to um, annotate and, and write down uh, stories from, from their history. They would be most pleased with this. I want to, as we were going down, I want to give a lot of the gold to the fishing village. and Yes. Of... <laughs> Completely selfless, Miss Vallejo. It's what history mm -hmm. remembers you for. Mm -hmm. <gasps> And as you go to grab the chests containing your just rewards, the program ends. And you find yourselves back on the holodeck. And the captain, I promise, is actually there. No, he's not. He left. <laughs> <laughs> Computer, initiate a site-to-site -site transport back to my quarters. <laughs> That is the last time I'm doing something like this again. <laughs> Quite some time. <laughs> it could have been worse, sir. You could have been I... in the metal bikini. <laughs> as I go back to my as I go back to my quarters and I uh, start writing my cyberpunk adventure that I run solo. <laughs> encrypted. <laughs> encrypted, of course, because I don't want anybody to know what my hobbies are. Oh, of course. <laughs> You realize you're on an intelligence gathering ship, correct? <laughs> Fine, then we'll make it. We'll make it an effort, though. We'll make it an event. <laughs> mm -hmm. What are the captain's hobbies? That's up to the captain to decide. Uh, anyone in the holodeck have anything le else they wish to do or say? Well, I'm, I'm glad I'm back to my normal height, but I have to admit, it was, it was an experience to behold. I don't know why I still feel like I'm chafing. <laughs> well, you didn't have much that you were worrying to chafe. 
Well, I for one am glad that uh, you were all able to join um, Bashir and I in experiencing this uh, key historical moment in Andorian history. I uh, it has definitely given me a new appreciation for Andor culture. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. As am I, Commander. <laughs> and on that note, we shall call it. it does a... ex... oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry to be... It does explain a lot, though. The dancing. I'll, I'll, it explains a lot. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Uh, and on that note, we shall call yeah. a session. Oh, do we have to? There's one last thing. Oh, what would you like to do, Captain? <laughs> so, if the rest of the crew has left the holodeck right now, yep. I'd like to go ahead and re-enter it. Okay. And sometime later, the captain re-enters the holodeck. Computer, check my schedule for today. I have no other c current events for the day, do I? No. Uh, you're, there is nothing pending on your schedule or to-do list. <laughs> That's good to hear. <laughs> Seal the doors. Doors are sealed. And re replay the last holodeck event. Modify <laughs> the encounter so that it only takes a party of one. <laughs> <laughs> Reformat. Restarting. Skip to the chapter with that uh, that cute Andorian daughter. <laughs> the captain. <clears throat> have, have my change? Have my previous changes to this program been modified and saved? Yes, she is still. Uh, yes, the the character's accent is still Australian. <laughs> Very well. Run this program from this time index. Notify the rest of the crew that I'm not to be disturbed. <laughs> Good eye, mate. Welcome back. As she oh, yeah, it's all coming together. <laughs> <laughs> and now we fade to black. Uh, so thank you all for playing along. And thank you all for watching. And we shall do another holodeck adventure whenever we have an idea to explore like this. So we will be back next week with probably a more serious tale or knowing these people it will not be as serious as i'd like but we'll still have fun so until next time bye bye <laughs>